let's get into some of today's topics and let's start with a banger first things first uh well uh, it, it, depending on how you look at it it's a banger or a huge miss but uh, we're gonna talk about it regardless there has been a master duel forbidden and limited list update and i'm not gonna pretend like i haven't seen it because it's gone like my twitter timeline was full of this this morning this is one of the more controversial ones uh, so I have seen some of the changes on here because people have talked about it on Twitter. Not all of them, but some of them. And what I saw, um, let's just say we're going to talk about it. Let's just say there is a, there's reason to talk about some of this stuff. Okay, so let us hop right in. Uh, once again, I'm not sure if I've seen the entire list. Uh, okay, Zodiac Dryden, for example, is something I didn't see. Uh, Zodiac Dryden is going from 1 to 3, which I honestly think is completely fine. The card was rarely used while it was at one and honestly the decks that would use dryden would always only use one anyways right it was always a zeus engine anyways the only deck that this affects literally it's pure zodiacs uh so and pure zodiac is not really a thing right so i mean i'm fine i, I think that's fine i i think they deserve uh three drydens i honestly think this card should come back in the tcg as well uh like i no business being at one or even banned right fine uh Lirilus cobalt sparrow i did not know this card was at two um i'm not the biggest fan of Lirilusk, but i also don't hate the deck so i think it's okay for the card to go back to three especially since the deck is not really doing anything i um i don't really enjoy playing against Lirilusk, especially when you don't have maxi or when they negate your maxi because they do a lot of combos but i think it's overall it's hard to make an argument it's hard to make an argument that this card should still be at 2 if you look at the current Master Duel metagame. So it's fine, I think. Uh, and that is it with the unbans. Just decluttering the ban list a little bit. Nice. Maybe potentially giving a shot to, to Zodiac decks or Lurlusk decks in the future. I don't hate it. Uh, we have Signet Mining from 3 to 2. Uh, which is a... I, I want to say at this point a Master Duel classic or OCG ban list classic where they just hit the weirdest cards um possible pretty much like they hit the weirdest card possible out of a deck so i mean obviously we all know we all have suffered from the popularity of uh, of math mech and master duel right now everyone is suffering right if we all we are all in agreement that master that math mech being popular is 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 not great um everyone agrees with me right now don't even pretend like you're not uh, you know agreeing with me um so i don't like i i like that they're doing something to cybers but sign it mining from three to two is not it it's not it chief uh tempest dragon ruler of storms from one to two is something i am on board with bring back the dragon rulers they have done nothing wrong and should all be unbanned <laughs> uh card has done nothing at one won't do anything at two uh i don't even know where blaster is at right now i think blaster is also at two or three like i they're just gradually gonna unlimit all of them and they're gonna realize uh it's not gonna do anything right so that blaster's at three already yeah and it's not doing anything right so maybe eventually if they if they hit if they unhit all of them maybe we can think about it but right now no no shot Pot of Desires from 3 to 2 is something that I I find odd because I don't even think that many people are using the card right now. Um, I don't hate Pot of Desires being at 2. It's been at 2 forever in the TCG um, and it's not really been an issue, I think. Like people, the decks that are, the decks that want to use Desires still play Desires and 2 Desires is still a decent amount, right? And so I don't think it changes that much um but i'm like i'm neither against or for this hit i'm kind of neutral on this one i think it's okay to be at two it's a powerful card so i think it's fine whatever uh quick launch going from three to two is um a little it's it's a it's a hit to dragon link which is a i don't even see that much dragon link anymore at the uh, in in master duel like i I'm not against this hit. I think it's a fair hit to the deck, right? It's a it's just emergency teleport pretty much for the deck, which I think is a fine card to be on the ban list. 
Uh, it's and Dragon Link is still a good deck, and it they are also going to receive this pattern at some point, right? And they know that they know that at some point when they release this pattern in Master Duel, um, Dragon Link is going to get a huge boost, right? And so Quick Launch going from Fudia Two is a very minor hit to Dragon Link. It's just a uh, it's just a consistency hit, basically, but not just consistency, also a very good extender as well. So it's a really powerful card. Uh, not gonna make Dragon Link unplayable or anything like that. Just opens that powerful card slightly less often. So I I think this hit is fine overall. This is not the worst. Uh, Chaos Space, same thing actually. Three to two, uh, kind of the same angle, right? It looks like they are. It looks like what they're doing here is they 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 try to weaken Dragon Link um, a little bit before this pattern releases because they want to kind of counteract it, but they don't want to kill it, right? They don't want to make Dragon Link unplayable by doing something like banning Striker Dragon or something like that, right? Um, they just want to slightly give it a, a, a slap on the wrist before we get this pattern, so um, so that the deck doesn't completely run rampant with the release of. Um, of this pattern, right? And I think that's okay. That's fair enough. Losing one quick launch, losing one chaos space hurts, but it does not make the deck unplayable. No, by no means, right? Uh, Pearly from 3 to 2 and Pearly Delicious Memory from 3 to 2 are two interesting hits. Um, I am a fan, honestly, of hitting Pearly. And when I say not Pearly, I, I mean Pearly the card, not Pearly the deck. Pearly from 3 to 2 is interesting. Uh, you might think it doesn't really matter because like, uh, oh, you, you can summon it from your deck anyways with all the cards and so on and so forth. But you you really underestimate how often Pearly runs out of the main deck monsters because how like every card in the deck is emergency teleport. You can really run out of these very quickly. Uh, and especially Pearly, because it's the one that's not once per turn, is the one that you keep summoning multiple times per turn, right? And so uh, if you if you want to do that, right, you would now have to summon the Black Cat multiple times. If you want to go, for example, for the Ghost Trick combo, the Ghost Trick combo summons out usually a bunch of Pearlies uh, to refill the hand and keep summoning more level 1 bodies. Um, if you want to do that still, I mean, Pearly has ways to play around this, right? Pearly could now play, um, multiple of the trap cards to, um, recycle the Pearlies from the graveyard. But th there are ways around this. I don't think this kills the deck. Um, but it is an interesting hit, this one. Like, this is a, this is a very meaningful hit because Pearly very consistently cycles through all three of the, of the light Pearly monsters, right? And so that is, um interesting especially since i mean pearly is already arguably the best deck in master duel right now um it's close but it i would say it is the best deck in master duel right now and uh it it still has not received e purely noir right so the pearly deck would have been completely out of control had they not done anything to it and so i like that they are doing things to it as well as pearly delicious memory going from three to two just me making it so you don't have a guaranteed way to get the card um, they didn't limit it immediately, I'm assuming because they want people to still be able to play Pearly um, at, w when Noir comes out. But um, both of these going from 3 to 2 are meaningful hits, I think. Uh, we have Stovi Torby from 3 to 2, which is um, th super weird. It's a super, super weird hit. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh... Yes, everyone is playing three Stovies in Labyrinth, but it's such a, like, this is such a nothing burger of a hit. It's such a small freaking hit. It's such a master duel design hit. It's so weird. I wonder what their philosophy is. I mean, at this point, I think you would think someone makes this ban list that literally doesn't really understand the game at all but just looks at the raw stats, the raw data, right? The raw, like, Labyrinth has a, ha, like, Stovi Torby has pretty much the same play rate as Big Welcome Labyrinth, right? Like, they are both played at three in the Labyrinth deck, so whoever makes the ban list things, they are the same power, right? Everyone plays three Stovi, everyone plays three Big Welcome, therefore, Stovi equals Big Welcome. 
That's that's almost what you would think, right? Um, because Stovi the two is so freaking irrelevant, man. It's so freaking irrelevant. I mean, yeah, the the core argument that people always make is that they don't want to hit URs because when they hit a UR, you get um more uh crafting points back, right? Because you uh you can dismantle them for a bonus, right? Um, and I, I, I get that. I, I get that, really. I do. I understand it. But I, I still don't think that... Like, don't make it this obvious, man. It's such a bad hit. It's such a bad hit. I mean, yes, Stovi Torby is the better of the two furnitures. Because it's level 2. It summons itself to the board. You can make Chaos Angel with it. You would rather open Stovi Torby than, uh, than Chandelier, so I guess I get it. But still, if you want to hit Labyrinth, do it in a meaningful way. And I'm pretty sure Labyrinth has cards that are not ultra rares that you could hit. Like, for example, Ariana, right? You could hit Ariana, which I'm pretty sure is a super rare. Uh, and if you put Ariana to one or two, that is actually a hit to, uh, to Labyrinth, right? But going from six furniture pieces to five furniture pieces barely changes your odds of opening them they are highly searchable you could have done something like ban ku clock for example which is like i mean it would be kind of drastic but if you want to hit a card that's not an ultra or a super rare you could have hit that you could have hit some of the trap cards i don't know stovi torby is just a very awkward very very awkward hit i don't it's basically not a hit to labyrinth at all they might as well just not have done it right uh, uh, cards to be limited. We have Runic Fountain. Uh, this one I've already seen. Uh, I feel like it's, uh, I feel like we've suffered enough at this point in time. I mean, this is a huge hit. The, the sad part about this, the, the really, the, the part that makes me sad about this is that, uh, this is not supposed to be a hit to the Runic decks that I like to play, like the Runic, uh, Naturia or the Runic Sprite or other Runic variations, right? This is just a hit aimed at runic stun, right? This is just a runic stun hit because that's the most popular runic deck. The other runic decks I barely even see on ladder. Like people don't really play the other runic decks. Um, and somehow, somehow for this one, it's okay to hit an ultra rare. Suddenly, all of a sudden we can hit an ultra rare if it's about runics, but we couldn't hit the freaking what super rare skill drain. Or super rare uh, goes and match even more or whatever, right? No, we have to hit the ultra. We this this time we hit the ultra rare runic fountain. What? 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 How? Ah. Anyways, moving on. I'm tilted already, and this is the most tilting out of all of them. Unironically, unironically, there is no, there is literally no person in the universe that can understand why. They limited Mathmec Diameter. They limited... Is this the last hit? You see. Yeah, that is the literal last hit. Is the freaking worst out of all of them. This ban list... I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. I don't like to be negative like this one. Like this, usually. But this might be the worst Master Duel ban list we've ever gotten. Not because... It does something super terrible to the game, like freaking unlimit uh, skill drain or something like that, right? It's not. It doesn't make the game worse, I don't think. But it's just in terms of the design quality. In terms of the design quality, this this list is just bad. It's just bad. It's not. It's not bad for the game. It's just, it's just it just makes no sense, right? It just makes no sense. Um, most of these changes pretty much change nothing and then mathmic diameter is just a cherry on top because it's the uh pretty much worst possible hit you could think of to mathmic crow diameter and dead bro if you crow diameter they already die it doesn't matter if they have more diameters in the deck or not uh literally let me show you something that i saw this morning on twitter uh, this is from the T this is from the OCG, but it's like at this point pretty much the same as in uh, in Master Duel. Uh, this is Task posting his current Mathmic list, right? Task Task's current math Mathmic list 
is playing one diameter and no Cyanet Mining. This isn't his list? Well, he posted it, Scrub. It doesn't matter. This is a current OCG math mech list. Anyways. There's no Cyanet Mining. And there's one diameter. There's also a second uh, access code in the side deck for some reason. Circulars at one in the OCG. So what is this then? Oh, it's. A, I think it's an old list that he's posting because of the current. This is the. It's an. It's an old list from back in the day. That he's reposting because you can now play it exactly like this in Master Duel. I get it, but it's, it's, the point still stands. The point still stands. One diameter doesn't make any sense because the deck can 100% function with one diameter. Diameter isn't even a starter card in that deck. Uh, and it doesn't need to play Cyanet Mining because while Circular is at three and you have the Spirit Engine to search it as well, you, it, the deck is consistent enough. The deck is consistent enough. It finds Mathmic Circular consistent enough. So this is where... This is where they're... Like, look, I understand that the Mathmic... Uh, the Mathmic... The, the Master Duel uh, devs have a different approach to the ban list than IRL, OCG, and TCG, right? They have a different approach to it, apparently, right? They probably just look some... They, they look at the data and they look at the play rate of cards and the, the win rate of cards. And for some reason, that made them think that putting Diameter to 1 and Cyanet Mining to 2 was a, an appropriate hit to Mathmic, right? The problem with that is that they cannot... They can't keep doing this and, like... The math mech is powerful in, in Master Duel right now, and it's going to remain powerful here because this list does nothing to it, right? And, um, and that is weird because they are recognizing that math mech is a problem. Math mech apparently has a large play rate and a large win rate, otherwise they wouldn't touch it at all. But they are making changes that will not affect it pretty much at all, right? Um, and there are ways to hit, once again, there are ways to hit Mathmic without limiting Circular, because you guys are saying, like, it's an ultra rare, they don't want to hit it. There's other ways that they could do it without, like, doing nothing, basically, right? So the argument of, oh, well, it's not a UR, it doesn't really work for me, because, well, yeah, it's not a UR, but that doesn't mean it's a good decision either. Like, if that's their reasoning, it's just bad reasoning, right? That's what I'm pointing out. Here's the logic. Here's the logic. Circular is the first card you use, so if it gets interrupted and you lose, its win rate goes down. Diameter is used at a later point where you know it's resolving, so it's a higher chance you win. They looked at the diameter's higher win rate when played and said hit that. That is true, right? That is true. The, so what, what 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 coder is saying is you use mathmic circular usually first things first right and so if your opponent max sees you and you pass and then you die or your opponent has like negates and stuff like that and uses them properly um you lose the game before you even get to diameter right so the win rate of diameter should be higher than the win rate of circular when played right because activating circular does not necessarily mean you win um, because if your opponent, like, max sees you and you don't have an answer, then you might, people might just surrender or just pass the turn and get OTK'd. Um, but as soon as you get to, uh, diameter, as if you get, if you get to resolve diameter in math mech, you probably win the game. That doesn't mean, that does not mean that diameter is a better card than circular. Um, and this is where, this is what I'm trying to point out. I understand this logic. I understand this logic. The problem is, if you are a Master Duel dev and you are using this logic, you do not understand the game, right? Like, this might be an explanation, but it's not a justification, right? It's like, okay, someone who... I, I understand this logic, but if you're using this logic, you should not be making ban lists, right? You, if, if, you are, if you are applying this logic as a master dual dev, you should not be making the ban list because you, you do not, un that, that is not, like, it doesn't make sense, right? 
he didn't say that he agreed yeah no i'm not this is not i'm not saying his take is is, is wrong it's the, it, the this is this might be the logic behind it he might be right about it but what i'm saying is if that is the logic then i think that needs to be criticized i think that is a fair point to criticize because this logic i don't think is is healthy for the game right like just looking at like there are certain cards um that when activated have a high chance of winning you the game but they are not a problem like in, in a let, let me give you an extreme example right exodia has a 100 win rate when its effect is applied right that doesn't mean it's problematic because it's hard to apply the effect it's not the problematic it's not a problematic card at all right but by that logic it's like oh exodia has a 100 win rate when being drawn so we need to get rid of that shit. but it's not that's not how it works right you you all see if i make the extreme example you understand how it doesn't make sense, right? Why is Stovey on the ban list then? That I have no idea. It's it's just a, this this ban list is a culmination of things that I don't understand. There are things on here that I think are good changes, like Dryden and Luralusk Unlimit. I I can get behind. Hurley hits are fine. Uh, Chaos Space and Quick Launch are fine. Pot of Desires is fine. Ruler uh, to two is fine um fountain to one even though i don't like it personally i think is a fine hit i think it's a fair hit um even though i would have preferred hitting runic stun in different ways but i think runic fountain to one is deserved i think the card is very strong um but i think specifically diameter signet mining and stovey torby which if you look at it in the grand scheme of things i'm actually fine with most of the hits on this ban list now that i look at it as a whole there's a a lot of things on here that I think are fine. It's just those three in the, in particular, I'm really confused by. Right? Um, which is weird, because... I think it's important to hit the, the most popular decks in a meaningful way, right? I think it's uh, I think it's important to make solid decisions when you make a ban list. And uh, they hit Pearly in a, in a meaningful way. They hit Dragonlink in a meaningful way. They hit Runic in a meaningful way. And then they just go around and say, oh, well, Math Mech, we're just going to do this. And Labyrinth, we're going to do this. So, like, it makes it doesn't make sense to me. It's not really... I am not mad, per se, about this ban list. I just think it doesn't change much. Um, which I'm fine with, you know. I don't think the current Master Duel metagame is, like, completely awful. And you need to do a lot of things to it. I don't have... I don't think, like, Master Duel is going to be um, terrible because of this list, right? I'm just thinking what could have been, and um, I guess a little confused and disappointed is a better way to put it, rather than, you know, I'm not mad or tilted at this ban list. It's just, like, kind of, like, nothing, right? I am not mad. I am just disappointed. <laughs> exactly. How would you hit Labyrinth? Uh, I think meaningful ways to hit Labyrinth would include limiting one of the Labyrinth trap cards because that is a big factor in the grind game as well as the, the starting odds with both traps goes down. Uh, they still have a lot of searchers for the Labyrinth trap cards with like all the furnitures and Ariana. Um, so you could still get them consistently on the first turn, but you would run out of them in the grind game, right? That that could be a one way of doing it. But obviously, those are ultra rares, and that's why they are not going to do it. Um, I just think that's whack. I think that's whack, because when I think about the game, right? When I think about the game and the game balancing, I don't want to be limited in my choices because a card is an ultra rare, right? Like, if I think this hit is the best for the game or healthy for the game, I don't want to be like, ah, oh, well, I can't do it, though. It's an ultra rare, right? I think that's weak. That's weak shit. Right? I, I just think that's that's poor um that's poor logic and poor argumentation, right? But uh, you have to you do have to realize at the end of the day that those sort of decisions like the ban list, and I guess that is the reason why we keep being disappointed in something some decisions, right? Is we think or in our heads the ban list is a way to fix the game, a way to balance the game, right? But that is only part of it, and I would argue probably only a smaller part of it. Like, a, a, a bigger part of the ban list is to help them make money, which is like, I, I guess we just need to accept that, because, I mean, it's a company, it's a business, it needs to make money, right? And so, like, the, the ban list often ends up functioning more as, like, a, a marketing tool than uh, just a way to balance the game, right? 
On another hand, though, you could argue that a well-balanced game is one that is more likely to make more money. So sometimes I do wonder if these decisions are actually for the better in the long, like in the long run, because if, you know, like a, a well-balanced game uh, gets people, gets more people interested and gets people to keep playing the game as well. So they might make more money that way around as well. So I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's actually that smart to do things like semi-limiting Stovi Torby because they don't want to give people uh 60 ultra rare cp or anything like that right uh okay well that is enough about the balance though i i think i've given my opinion and uh and here we are now i don't think this ruins the game or anything we're just gonna have to live with it and uh, i think we're gonna be all right <laughs>